What's up, YouTube? Hello, sunshines. Hey, y'all. My name's Lacey Yari, and I'm here with my first YouTube video. My name's Lacey Yari, and I'm here with my first YouTube video. I am here to break down the... Hey, y'all. My name's Lacey Yari, and I'm here um, to do a grocery haul for you all today. I am just starting out my YouTube channel, so I'm a little nervous in front of the camera. I want to go ahead and get started because it's easier to talk about food than myself. Here we go. I have this blue organic popcorn that I use an air popper to pop. I get this kind because the bag kind uses a chemical that has been shown to cause lung irritation. A man back in the early 2000s got a settlement for you know, like $78 million after eating two bags a day for 10 years. I buy blue because blue usually has more antioxidants. Wow, I didn't think I'd be so nervous. I actually have my whole little table set up and everything, so I guess because we're doing this, we're really doing this. Okay, Lacey, get it together. Veganese, this is my first time getting this. Oh, by the way, okay, let me explain. I have this um, grocery haul organized from whole foods to minimally processed to ultra processed. And I also wanna explain to you all a little bit about the nitty gritty of processing because it's not all bad. I'll explain that a little bit as I'm going into it instead of just like having a lecture on processing. Okay. Actually, this belongs over here because this is minimally processed. I have organic elbows. This is just organic macaroni. I buy organic because wheat is one of the most common genetically modified organisms grown in the United States. If you buy regular wheat, nine times out of ten, it has been genetically modified, aka smothered with pesticides, if not embedded with the chemical DNA of the pesticide in it, because they do that too. So um, it's best to buy organic with these, really with anything if you can, but certain things like wheat, always, always purchase organic, um, sprout it if possible. But this is new, I bought this gluten-free tortilla wraps because my kids would love to eat burritos. These are made with cassava flour. I brought organic mushroom broth because I'm about to make some soup. If you can't hear, I have come down a little under the weather. Some vegetable broth and another type of vegetable broth. I bought two different types of organic vegetable broth because one is based with carrots and one is based with tomatoes. So organic soy. The verdict is still out on this. Soy, most common genetically modified organisms grown in the United States. Another reason why people look out for soy is because it is a phytoestrogen. And so that means that the body um, interprets it as estrogen and it can mess with hormonal balance. I just watch it with the soy. I usually don't add it to anything more than my smoothies. I've added protein since I do the equates. It helps out. I got this herb goddess. Funny story. In 2015, three years ago when I started this food journey, I had an account called Food Stylist, and I would feature prominent food accounts that I thought were the most beautiful. And this girl, Gretchen Grosshares, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I remember posting her artwork on my page, and it was one of the things that made my page go viral. Like it got over two and a half thousand, how do I say, cut. It had about over 2,500 likes. And unfortunately, that account, I deleted it and tried to reactivate it and it was gone. But can't win them all. Again, I just thought that that was interesting to see her now on this. Oh, let me talk about this product. I thought about myself. I guess it's not so hard after all. This is new. I've never tried this before. Salad dressings are usually based with either canola oil, soybean oil, aka the rancid oils because of the way that they are processed. Um, adding heat to them actually makes them oxidate so are rampant with free radicals due to the oxidation of the molecules. So they're just not good. Even if they're organic, they're high in omega-6, something that the typical American diet has way too much of anyways. So I've been on the hunt for a good dressing that is not based with any of those oils that I named before. 
Listen to these ingredients, organic sunflower oil, organic lemon juice, organic basil, organic green onions, organic apple cider vinegar, organic tahini, organic parsley, organic agave nectar, organic garlic puree, kosher salt, organic ground black pepper, and that's it. I love it. So I can't wait to taste this. I'm sure it is as good as it looks. I got some flax oil. This is new. I've been obsessed with omega threes lately. I've been actually researching, you know, what it is about omega threes. And it's not so much that we're deficient in omega threes. It is an essential nutrient, meaning that we have to obtain it from our diet. We cannot make it on our own. A lot of nutrients our body can synthesize on its own. And omega three and omega six actually work in concert. They travel down the same pathways. And omega-3 is an anti-inflammatory, while omega-6 is inflammatory. And you might think, what is, that's bad. And it's not all bad because to heal and things like that, inflammation is a necessary part of life. But when it is chronic, it is one of the underlying causes for almost all diseases. So omega-3 is important, especially if you're eating french fries, um, these types of regular salad dressings, high in omega-3, so to compensate, flax oil is great. I put this in my kids' oatmeal. Um, you can throw a little bit in your smoothies. It does taste like fish, which is weird. I told my son that and he was like, huh, omega-3 must be the thing that gives fish its fishy taste. And I was like, wow, that's smart. It's because I couldn't put that together. Shout out, Lige. Moving on. Got some coconut water, I love this. It is so hydrating. <sighs> This is gonna be a edit. I hope I can do it. I know I can, not I hope I can, I know I can. I hope I have some cool music. I was thinking about doing like the toy music like in the background, you know what I mean? Or I could do like the Casey Neistat music. Regular oats, it's not a genetically modified crop, but it is heavily sprayed with pesticides. It is pre-harvested, so meaning that they spray it to kill the crop so they can harvest it sooner. Oats are one to always purchase organic. I love oats for the soluble fiber. That's why it has its good rep for cholesterol and diabetics because it moves slowly through your bloodstream. Also something else I watch out for is refined sugar. This has two grams of refined sugar. Refined sugar causes free radicals in the body, which accelerates aging. Ain't nobody got no time for that. So. Ain't nobody got no time for that. So. This is basically like the plain Cheerios, if you're familiar with that. I can get my baby to eat it sometimes. I also have Dakashi. Dakashi has more uh, grams of sugar per serving, so they like that one. That one tastes like regular Honey Nut Cheerios, if you're familiar with that. Both of these are gluten-free. Coconut milk, I like this for the creaminess. I can't find pure coconut creams. And then I use the milk in a smoothie or something. This does have the stabilizer guar gum, which can cause intestinal issues. I also top it on my Mexican dishes, which I'm gonna make later on. Um, hemp oil, same thing with flaxseed oil. It is organic as well, cold pressed. That's important because it preserves most of the nutrients that way. I bought these. This is, again, this is highly processed because I normally don't buy ready-made rice or beans or lentils or anything. Well, I take that back. I do buy canned beans, but I also buy dried beans and I try to use dry because it's more efficient, but you don't always think ahead, you know? So I bought these because sometimes I want some rice and I don't have time to cook it. Molasses, I love this because it has calcium, magnesium, iron. It's basically a sugar source, so you have to watch it, but it does have more nutrients. White sugar has no nutrients, so that is why I opt for this. Uh, like I said, some of the stuff I did already have, but I bought it this week, I swear. Um, okay, let's talk about this. This is a probiotic tea, which is a little suspect because this tea survives the heat process, which is like what? And it is a patent probiotic called GBI 36086. And according to the patent law, you cannot patent any naturally occurring thing in nature. So if you combine the genes of something like genetically modified things, or even, I'm not sure if it applies to artificial selection, that is where things are kind of hazy because you can make a combination that does not exist in nature, not through um, laboratory means, just by getting them together where they normally would not. So 
and things like that, I don't have a problem with. Other people, such as Dr. Sevi, the Acaline diet, shun things of that nature. But so this is one, I stopped drinking actually GT's kombucha because of this when it was brought to my attention. I did ask GT about it on social media and he kind of gave me like a kind of a hazy runaround answer. I'm still the main billionaire. Now probiotics are able to be in like baking in things they've never been in before. And it's all this one same probiotic that they're putting in things. So that's something to watch. Like I said, it's on my suspect radar. I guess we'll just follow up with that. I guess we'll just follow up with that. I just found this. I'm obsessed with the oil spray because it makes things easier, but this coconut oil and it's organic and it's no CFCs. I'm not quite sure chlorophyll. I know it's the stuff that like erodes the ozone. This has none of it. So I bought two of these because one I'm going to use to moisturize because I'm lazy and the other for cooking. Let me switch. All right. We got some oats. These again. I thought I already went. Oh, I did go over oats. I have my organic spices. I always try to stock up like maybe three or four at once. Oregano, cumin, dill weed, and celery seed because I plan on making some duca. Shout out Allison Yu. <laughs> and yeah, those are my spices. Make sure they're organic. They are in the minimally processed because they're dried, they're cut, but there are no preservatives, no flowing agents. You have to watch out for those. Alrighty, let's move on to the crown jewel. Nuka honey. This is my new obsession. I was supposed to be a vegan. After just looking at the benefits of this stuff, honey already has so many wonderful healing properties, but this one is, but it only grows in New Zealand and it's times 10, maybe a hundred. I forgot because I have so much research floating around comes from a certain bush it is organic there's usually a factor on here that tells you um the potency and this is k factor 16 so this is like supposedly one of the highest that you can find um this is 26 dollars in target when i first saw it, that's really what intrigued me i was like what is 26 dollars and with food you're gonna pay for quality some crap items are overpriced, but for most of the time speaking, that is the case. So I looked into this and went back and bought it immediately. And I also do it for face mask and things like that. It's really good. This is minimally processed because it does go through a process. And that is why vegans don't eat honey because it is technically made from bees, but it is not made of bees. Bees make it. That's semantic. Potato, piccata, coconut milk. This is another, this is highly processed. It should be over here. I don't know why it's in the middle. This has guar gum or locust bean gum. Again, another thickener that has all types of implications for our guts. This is pomegranate. This is minimally processed because it's just literally busted open and taken out. If you've ever seen a pomegranate, this is the only edible part of it as far as I know. And usually I do buy a pomegranate. Oh, they're not even in season anymore. Yeah, oops, don't tell. The goal is to be a seasonally eating, sustainably grown, vegan, zero waster, right? That is the goal, seriously. It is kind of like, this is the start. All right, red quinoa, pretty much self-explanatory. Red lentils, organic wild rice. These are not organic. The only organic option was to buy a bag and I don't need that much. So I will not be using the zest of this, just the juice. That's why I bought those. I plan on freezing these bananas for smoothies, um, organic sweet potatoes, which I also make and freeze for smoothies. These are one of the buggers that keeps me back and forth in the grocery store because they go bad so quickly. Just can't keep an avocado. Apples, I have a whole bag of these. I just brought one out. Pineapple. One thing that I've been doing lately is I've been obsessed with proteolytic, proteolytic enzymes. It's concentrated in the pineapple core. So I used to just throw it away. Now I grind it up and put it in my smoothies. It's great for digestive support. It's also found in ginger and papaya and 
kiwi, things like that. So this is the biggest thing of chia seeds I've ever seen or bought. It's $20 at Walmart. This will last me at least six months. Chia seeds are where it's at. I love to make them for breakfast. It's a great source of fiber, a great source of omega-3s. I buy these for my kids, even though I cannot stand the way that they are. You'll buy them and it's like they'll be all squishy and almost dead inside. But I think that's because they've been irritated. And it's a process that I just heard of where they basically zap food with radiation. So if it's bad food, if it's rotten food, it'll take the smell away. It'll basically kind of like kill it. You know what I mean? But if it looks good from the outside still, then they can still sell it. And they do this to food. Like, y'all, all this information that I'm talking, that I'm referencing, I am in the process of compiling it all and creating a text for people to be able to go through at their own pace and use in their own ways. Um, so, yeah. Plantain. Um... They're awesome, actually. I've only made them maybe a handful of times. First time I had them was in New York. So, they're really good. So, and what else do I have? Oh, parsley. Fresh parsley. I do buy some fresh herbs. I also have some fresh cilantro, but it's kind of wilty because I bought it like three days ago. And I didn't want to bring it out because it ruined the aesthetic. So, I did buy this. So a couple of non-edible items this hearth and hand collection from Magnolia. Oh my gosh. Joanna Gaines is been I used to have a bowl. Um, I bought one from the same collection about a couple months ago and I had all these wonderful things I made in it and it broke. Or well, it didn't break. I broke it. So, so and it's out. I can't find it anywhere and I bought this. I bought two dishes to compensate today. Mason jars. This is what I put my smoothies in. I also, when I meal prep for clients, I store a lot of food in here. Not just smoothies, but sometimes salads, sometimes whole meals. And you just dump it out in a bowl and ready to go. Oh, last thing. Bamboo scale. Because I'm about to put this great guide that I'm in the process of creating to work. Um, and test it out for you guys. Because I just realized, I'm like, why can I lose my cut? I'm like, see, because ever since you did your first cut and figured out how to do all this stuff, you've never actually, like, got a digital scale and gone through the process again. So, yeah, I'm basically planning on one final cut. I don't like this whole bulking and cutting thing. Like, I kind of want to maintain a relatively lean physique all year long. Like, and maybe in the summer have like an eight week, you know, where I cut down, but I'm not like Christian. I can't do it. I need to get leaner and just stay that way because <laughs> I'm not trying to bulk up for a competition. Well, I think I am going to do, I'm saying too much anyways, um, more to come on that. Perhaps that will be my final cut coming up. So, yep, that is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this grocery haul. I hope you don't mind my voice. I actually listened to Lauren Tickner for the first time yesterday. I just found her on some random fitness person's comment section. And I listened to her podcast. It was the one where she introduced herself and um, basically what she specializes in, in the fitness community and personal branding and all that. And she really did. She lit a fire, man. She, some people just because she lit a fire mind you I was at this point already where I've been planning I have basically known what to do I've been watching the greats in my opinion yeah so I was at the point where I was ready to go and I've just been waiting it's always like the house isn't clean enough my makeup's not perfect I don't have enough time I need to cook instead I listened to her yesterday I'm sitting right here on this floor right here yeah so we're doing it. I have a date. This should be out January 23rd. That's the date. That's the date I set in my head. Don't know why. A lot of things happening on that date now. In retrospect, I didn't plan it that way, but must be a good date. I hope you guys like my energy. Like, high five. Whatever. Actually, no, I don't care. 
I hope that this finds the people that it was meant to find. That's what I hope. I'm excited. Not quite sure how I'm going to end this yet. So. We will. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you what I made after putting my groceries away. I have a rainbow salad with pomegranate seeds and red grape tomatoes, shredded carrots, ribbon squash, quartered cucumbers, and diced purple sweet potatoes.